Okay, I've had people request uh, an update to my workflow since I'm now using uh, Photoshop CS2. And it is quite a bit easier, especially because it will allow you to save your own default settings. When you're shooting in your camera room and you set your color, uh, it should pretty much be consistent from session to session because your lights are going to always put out the same color. And the only fluctuation you'll have is um, uh, different people have different color skin. There's olive color skin, there's magenta type skin, there's uh, lighter skin, darker skin. So there will be some slight uh, correction needed, but typically all your sessions will come in uh, corrected because you already have your, your settings uh, set for your camera room. And that's what we're going to do here. I took a, a young lady's session here that I did. And um, what we do is, all right, what I do is I take all the day's shots as I did before. And I put them in a compact flash reader. I copy them over to my uh, portable hard drive, my studio hard drive. The portable hard drive comes home, and I copy all the files for that day again to my home computer, so I have them in three places. I have the original shots on my studio computer, on my portable hard drive, and on my home computer, three copies. Uh, the ones on the home computer, at the end of the day, uh, I come home, and everything that was shot that day is in my... 2006 folder here. These are the sessions I've done so far this year. <laughs> Not a whole lot, but it hasn't been the season yet. And uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, pick a session. Uh, let's see who this is. Okay, this is a young lady I prepared. And what I've actually done is removed my default settings. So what you're seeing here is the way they were shot in the camera coming into Photoshop with Photoshop's default settings and we don't like those settings so what we're going to do is come up to our first one here in the head and shoulders and I am going to uh, adjust it. Now normally Photoshop comes up with autos and you don't want those at all. Get rid of that. Pros don't use auto anything. Uh, you can see my histogram looks pretty good here. My blacks are a little bit blocked up probably in her hair here and my highlights are okay so I would rather keep my highlights from being blown out than uh, blocking up my my shadows so still I'm not nuts about these shadows so I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna change the curve and the default curve in CS2 has a little bit of a bend to it and uh, I don't like that we are gonna go to a linear a nice straight line and if you make that change you can see the image over here actually picks up more tonal range watch it here it goes it just has a little less contrast. And then I'm going to go into lens and I'm going to uh, set my vignette settings here almost to max. So I slide them both way to the left and that will add a vignette to all my images automatically. So I no longer need a map box on the front of my digital camera. In the detail you can adjust uh, sharpness but I don't deal with that at all. I, I like the way my images look. So coming out here we see my exposure uh, is pretty much the way I shot it. looks pretty good and even though I switched my uh, my contrast here from medium, let's go back, we can see that this is actually blocking up the shadows more and when I come into linear it pushes that over and gives me a little better uh, detail in my shadow area. I'm going to come into adjust and contrast defaults about here. I'm going to turn it down even more saturation defaults at zero. I'm going to pump that up a little bit. 12, 14, and, and you can do this to taste or uh, depending on your camera. I imagine everybody's camera is going to be a little bit different. Some might give you a little more uh, saturation than others. So kind of eyeball this here. Um, let's see here. The exposure looks just a touch weak probably because she's dark skinned. So I'm going to push that a little bit. And even though I'm getting a little peak here in my uh, in my highlight end, probably your eye whites here, I still want to set the exposure for her face. So I'm going to push that exposure just a touch. Contrast looks pretty good. A little more saturation. I like a lot of bump there. I'm going to check my vignette and just bring that over to the left a bit more. I'm fairly pleased with that. Now what you would do once you get pleased with it, 
is say, okay, I want to use this now for all my shots that are done in the camera room. This is the, the best part here, the new uh, CS2. You come up here and you click this little button right here. And let me see if I can make it so it stays in our recording window. And you say, save new camera raw defaults. This is just the greatest thing. So you click that. And now, every time you bring an image into Photoshop, it will have your curve already set and your vignette already set, your temp, your tint, your exposure, everything set to the way that this particular image is. And you may want to refine this a little bit from image to image. I might find uh, a light-skinned person might use a little bit different exposure and, and I may adjust that and then re-save again and kind of fine-tune it a little bit. But pretty much this is, um, this is right on for my camera room. So now I say done, and it will make a change here. It takes a little time, but that will actually adjust the new settings. Now here's the the original Photoshop settings, and you can see that her yellow sweater is actually a little blown out here, and she looks quite contrasty. Switching back, now it's not blown out, and her skin looks nicer. Look at the difference in the skin and the, the shadows, the way the uh, the blacks here are just so black and blocked up in here. They just have... There's just a nice soft tone to it. So now, what we want to do is, much like I did in my old workflow, I would come through here and select all like images. And these are all about the same, so I'm going to do a right click. What I first did there, I'm sorry, is our first image is selected, and by holding shift and clicking the left button, you can multiple select. And you can do this any way you like. Say that's the first image. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to click that image and it will select that series. I can come down here and hold shift and click that. And now these are selected. So you can multiple select groups of images by clicking the first one, holding shift and clicking the last one. So what I'm going to do here is select all like images and I'm going to right click anywhere on the selected images. I can right click here, I can right click here. If I right click here I may lose it. Yeah I did. So we're gonna reselect all the like images up here and when I say like images these are all typical head and shoulder black background and then I'm gonna right click and I am going to do previous conversion. That means the conversion we just did will now be applied to all these images I have selected and, and as you watch here you can actually see them get modified. And it just did the last one. Now all of these images have the same settings that, I, that we uh, made for this one. And we can come in here and even check it. It has the same temperature, same exposure, same everything. We can go to the curve. The curve is linear. And uh, the lens has our vignetting. And just that quick, all of those are set. And we can come down here. And this looks really quite nasty from direct from camera. And we're going to apply those as well. Let's just let's just uh, take that first one since we've done these. Let's take this one and go to the very end and apply those settings right away to everything. I'm going to do previous conversion down here, and it's going to now go through and tweak them. Now, because we saved that as our camera raw defaults, and remember we did that over here by doing save new camera raw defaults because we did that every time we bring in new images so tomorrow the next day's shoots when I bring those shots in and drag them into a bridge here and make them pop up they will use these same default settings that we already have set here they will have the linear they will have the vignetting and the same color exposure everything so the only thing that should change on occasion in the camera room is the exposure because if you don't feather exactly the same or if you don't measure exactly a string's diff distance to the nose or to the chin, you'll have a little bit of fluctuation in exposure. So then what we do, we're letting it apply the new settings here and you can see it's still cranking through them. You can see it right there. It's working its way up. See how each one changes? So then what happens is, 
when you bring in images from this point on you have saved your new camera raw defaults then all you have to do is go through and look at each one and think okay this one looks just a touch dark so we're just gonna bump the exposure just a touch maybe reduce the contrast to hair say done and that one just lightened up these look okay this one's a little dark a little dark I like those so now we're gonna do a right click and do previous conversion because the, we just lightened the one above and it just lightened those so those look good so it saves you a lot of time now this one here I didn't like my lighting here to be totally honest um, what we're gonna do is make sure that the vignette is heavy on this we're gonna bump up the exposure touch for her face add a little more contrast Turn down the saturation just a touch on that. Say done. It makes the change, and because all of these are the same, because they're all fairly drab and flat lit, I'm going to select them all, and I'm going to apply previous conversion. And it will change these settings now to all these other like images. We're going to come down here and do a glam pose here. We're going to make sure that the vignette is nice and heavy because I like a lot of vignette on that and what I'll actually do if she orders from that I'll vignette it more it's still not enough even though it's maxed out but those look pretty good as is I'll leave those this particular shot might be a touch dark maybe the main was a little bit too far back and even the histogram shows that so I'm going to just bump the exposure just a touch till she looks good and I, I'm looking at the face as far as exposure goes that's what I want correct. The histogram has now come over here, looks much better. I'm going to say done. It lightens. You can see all like images here are uh, maybe not quite as dark, but there's a few. You Just like you can click the first image and hold shift and click the last, you can also click the first one, hold control, and pick at random here so you can apply those previous conversions to those images just by holding control key and selecting where holding the shift key takes everything in between for you so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna click that one looks a little dark that one a little dark that one a little dark that one a little dark this one seems lighter lighter mm, those are borderline I'll say they're a little dark so these two are lighter I'm gonna do a right click previous conversion and it's now going to take the settings here and lighten all those up and now that those are light these seem do seem a little dark so but maybe not quite as much so I'm going to push it say done click the like image say previous conversion it lightens that one to match and now those are set now I don't like that at all either underexposed here the histogram shows she looks drab and dark so we're gonna push the exposure you can watch that histogram come over but I'm really paying more attention to her face than the histogram I kinda watch both I like that it just has a nice bright look to it. it looks a little contrasty so I just push that down a little bit yeah, I like that a lot I'm gonna say done and it lightens it the rest of these all the like images of course be these are like images and they're all dark because the main light hasn't moved it was set here and then I shot several for different expressions smile serious blah 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 this one I added uh, looks like a reflector you can see how she has a little more glow in the second one here from below so this is normal this is with the handheld reflector so they're all fairly similar so we're gonna take this first one hold shift take all like images say previous conversion that's the one we just did and it will take these settings and apply them to all these now we got a little trouble here. It looks like the exposure fluctuated a touch. Maybe when I shot this first one, it looked a little overexposed, so I might have adjusted the exposure down. Hey, let's go find out. In the metadata, we're going to see that the f-stop probably changed. Where is our f-stop? I don't use this down here very often because I don't usually care what I shot them at. <laughs> there it is exposure f9 125th f9 let's see if this is different yep f8 so what I did was I shot this one 
saw it was a little dark, opened up to f8, and shot the rest of these. That's why when I applied the same settings, these now look too light. So now I have to come in here, reduce the exposure to where I like it, say done, hold shift, and apply that to all these. And see if it dark now, I like them. So I'll do that sometimes. When I do the first shot of a series, I'll look at the LCD. I saw that was a little dark at F9. So I opened it up, went to F8, and shot the rest of these. Same thing here. That looks pretty good, but you might want to bump the exposure. Now, sometimes the histogram is tricked or fooled, and you'll see that there's quite a peak here. Normally, the red that we see is the red in the face. But if someone's wearing red or a color similar to red that has red in it, like her bright orange here, the peak is not the face. The peak is her her top color here. So we have to kind of ignore that because we don't want to adjust the exposure for her top. According to this, see now the peak is going down. And as we bring the exposure down to where it should be, her top is now properly exposed. But her face means more to me than her top. So I'm going to push the exposure here until I see her face looking nice here visually. And uh, I might be overexposing her top, but her top is far less important to me. Exposure is always based on the face. And uh, I now like that. I'm going to say done. And these look a little dark and drab here. I'm going to hold shift, all like images, and I'm going to apply previous conversion. And if I didn't change my exposure, then they should be right on. And I didn't change while shooting. Looks like I was consistent. We can do the same thing here with the glam. We can turn this down, bump up the exposure a touch. That's pretty close. Done. Click all like images and say uh, previous conversion. And this is what I do at the end of each day. And because of CS2 and the way that it it defaults and keeps our curve set and sets our vignetting and brings in all the images originally that way there's very little adjustment that needs to be done now I'm gonna push that a little bit it's looking a little contrasty so I'm gonna push the contrast down even further we do have a peak on the histogram but that's because of her top here it's just really intense I'm still working as far as visually by how her face looks that's what I'm setting my exposure on we click done. I like that compared to these others that are slightly darker. I will hold shift, right click, previous conversion, and now these settings are applied to all these other images. And you can see it go over them just that quickly. Same thing here. Looks just slightly drab. I'll pump it up just a touch. Now, because she, well, there is red here, but because she doesn't have all that massive red on, when we push the exposure, we're not. We're not uh, blowing out here. We're not peaking so much in the in the reds. We have a little peak, which is probably this one right here. But I still I like her face there. Add a little more color, a little saturation. I'd like more vignette, but we're pretty much we are maxed out. And uh, all like images again. Any of them that look about the same, they're all slightly dark and drab. Even this other pose is. So I'm gonna continue right on through and say previous conversion and it's going to convert those here really quick you can see them coming down looking good and as long as you shoot consistently this will work great if you're constantly uh, changing your f-stop too much or uh, if you're uh, not feathering the same or if you're not measuring your main light, then these will be all over the place. You'll get a light one, a dark one, and you'll have to do each one. But if you're consistent in your shooting, then they will all adjust to the same settings, which really works nicely. Now this is a real tricky shot here. This has to be um, adjusted because this is a mix of ambient light, a real slow exposure, to pick up the candlelight plus flash. So this will this will take some extra effort and we'll want to pull some of the yellow out of it because I'm picking up ambient light. Normally you don't have to adjust the color. But everything else is the same, the curve, it's all by default. I'll say done. 
I will hold shift and push that and say previous conversion. These do tend to fluctuate, so I have to watch it because uh, I'm adjusting exposure constantly while shooting these to try and get the candles brighter. A little red, so I'm going to pull out both of these. Say done. Try and apply that to these. Very little consistency in these. Let's take a look and find out why. This one was a 40th at f4. A 40th to pick up the candlelight, f4 again to help pick up candlelight. I may move the main further away to compensate for that. This one, 40th and f4. 40th and f4. And this one's 125th at f3.5. And that's again to pick up the candlelight, but you can see that that uh, makes the exposure shift quite a bit here. So that one's adjusted. This one, 125th at 3.5, same here. So I am going to apply previous conversion. There we go. And you'll go all the way through. You might look at your, your whites here, your high key. And uh, I don't know why we went so dark here camera uh, Photoshop raw defaults are right there my defaults are like that what a difference this is the way they come in those are Photoshop's normal settings watch her face and the jacket here and the detail that comes in as we go into my defaults that I have saved much better and I don't like uh, washed out high key so I just let the background just kind of fall where it may. And you can use the crop tool to actually see what this will look like. Which is really a neat feature. You can hit that, say done, and it actually crops it here, but it's still a raw. Isn't that neat? It didn't have to convert it. And now you can see the actual shot. And because I'm not doing washed out uh, typical high key old school high key where it's it's very white I uh, leave the uh, the dark vignetting in there as well and you can go opposite and add like a light vignetting but I don't like that so I vignette that with the dark because I want the subject to pop now the white there I just noticed looks a touch blue so we're gonna add a little warmth just a little do done and we can apply those to all the high key all the like images because they're exposed the same actually these are more high key so let's just select all those and see how close we come we're going to do uh, the previous conversion again and if you don't want to wait for them you can select one and it'll usually do that one first for you so you can see what it's going to look like so it looks a little drab. I'm going to push her a little bit. And we've got a lot of reds in here and the oranges. So again, we're peaking here. But I'm going to push the exposure for her face. I like that better. Ooh, I like that. But now the whites are starting to bloom. I'm going to turn the contrast down just a touch to get rid of that. And say done. And hold shift. Select all. Previous conversion. And it will... See how it's lightening up each one? There we go. And you can do the same thing with the locker shot. Looks a little bright. I'm going to turn down the contrast a little. She's kind of getting blown out down there. Push exposure just a touch. I'd like more vignette, but we're maxed out. Hold shift. And do previous. So we do that with the entire day's shoot. We are now done. And of course, that's only one session, so there's going to be a lot more images to do in a day. But typically, we don't have to do that much tweaking to each one because they come in with the default settings that we saved. That's the beauty of this. So now that we have them all adjusted, what I want to do is make proofs. These are just raw files I need JPEGs to upload to the lab. So I'm going to go into Tools, Photoshop Tools. I'm going to find Image Processor, which is now built in and file selected in bridge three oops I goofed so we're gonna cancel that it only found three because I only have these three highlighted what we're gonna do is click one 
go to the top, hold shift, and click the, uh, the first one. So we clicked the last and the first, and now you can see every one is highlighted. I believe there's about 130 images there. I'm going to go back to Tools, Photoshop, Image Processor. Now we have 130 images selected. We're going to save in the same location. It will actually create a JPEG folder and put the JPEGs in there. We are going to save file type as JPEG for our proofs. We're going to resize to fit, so it's going to resize them down. I want 4x5 proofs. Now this is going to get a little confusing. My folders and my uh, cropping in camera using Rob's Pro Crop is 4x5 aspect. So I want to deliver 4x5 proofs in our 4x5 folios. Now I have them printed 4x6 because the full frame of the 35mm format is a 4x6. You can see that she has a lot of space over her head and more body here than we want. That's because when I have this printed to a 4x5, they will cut off in the lab. The machine will cut off the top and bottom to give me a 4x5. Since this is a 4x6, it will be about a half an inch off top and half an inch off the bottom. So, we're going to process the full size, but the lab is going to automatically crop top and bottom when I order 4x6. Now, it's going to get even more confusing. I want my proofs to be 200 pixels per inch. That's uh, the resolution that ProLab wants to print them at. So, I'm figuring that the largest dimension, depending on its orientation, whether it's a vertical shot or a horizontal shot, is, is, shot, is going to be 6 inches. And 200 times the 6 inches will be 1,200 pixels. So that would be 200 for 1 inch, 400 for 2 inches, 600 for 3 inches, 800 for 4 inch, 1,000 for 5 inch, and 1200 for 6 inches. That's 200 pixels per inch. So I put in 12 and 12 depending on whether it's a, a horizontal or a vertical. And you can set your JPEG quality and that will be the size of the files that you upload to the lab. 12 is a little bit overkill. You can go into 8, 9, 10 and they're gonna look great. So let's go with 8 to keep them small. Keeping them smaller means less upload time. We're going to convert profile to sRGB. We really don't need to because I'm shooting that way, but just in case, why not leave it checked? I also have a, a little copyright info down here. And I have it include the ICC profile. That's because my lab uses sRGB as well. I don't have to. I get similar results if there's no ICC profile, but I just do it because it uh, it's there. <laughs> now I'll click Run and... At this point, at the end of the day, I then go up and Joy has dinner ready and we'll have dinner. And this will now process each of my raw files from the day and it will put them into the day's JPEG folder that I later come down and uh, drag and drop to PLE and tell them to print me a 4x5 proof of everything that was shot. Even though I'm uploading 4x6s, their machine will crop off the top half inch, the bottom half inch, and will send me a 4x5. And I get exactly as I cropped in camera because I'm using Rose, uh, Rob's Pro Crop, which puts a line right here in the viewfinder and a line right here in the viewfinder so that I know exactly what my 4x5 proof is going to look like. And that in turn shows me exactly what my 8x10 crop is going to look like because an 8x10 and 4x5 are the same aspect. So Let's get back in here a minute. I am going to hit escape and abort this. It usually takes a little while. That's why I walk away and go have dinner or something. But through the magic of television, <laughs> I have them done already. And what it's done is created a JPEG uh, folder here. And uh, it's created a proof for each file. And that's what Image Processor does. You can see that these are still uh, 4 by 6 aspect. They're not cropped yet. This one would look nicer with this cropped here and this cropped here. And that's going to happen in the lab. So now that we have these all done, we go to the folder. 
I keep them on, uh, let's see here. They're on my iDrive, my picture drive. Studio folder, 2006. And I go in there. Here's all our raw files. Inside here is our JPEG files, which are going to be made for proofs. We take a look at the size of them. This is, see, there's the 1200, the 200 pixels per inch. So the maximum dimension, whether it's a horizontal or a vertical, I mean, or a horizontal like this one, is 1200. That's the maximum dimension. So these are all 200 PPI images. And it's only 189K because we saved it at, uh, I believe I had a setting of uh, JPEG compression of 8. So they're not all that big. Now because I shoot heavy, I want to edit out the extras. I use a program called XNView for this. And uh, with XNView, what I can do is uh, look at each file up here in a thumbnail size. And using my arrow keys here on the keyboard, I can move left and right. And what I'll do is compare different images like this. Like this is a far away version of this one. So I might come in here and just do a quick delete. And it's a quick way to cull through them real quick. And just flip through them. say there she's a little starey eyed you hit the delete key if you want you can make it real quick so what I'll do is go through and edit out duplicates edit out ones I don't care for I think you get the general idea until I get down to the 30 or 40 that I should have and uh, by then the uh, the directory itself, the, the JPEG directory, has been cleared out to the desired amount of uh, proofs that I want to upload. Okay, and then after I've culled out the duplicates and the ones that I don't like to get it down to a decent number, I'll select them all. I'll bring up ProLab Express. Oh, we have a new look today. I will do select, drag, and drop. I'll put in the day's uh, date. I'll say, okay, those are um, actually what I do is do proofs. 3-3. Three, three. And Eddie says click in the active X first and then they come in better. So I'm, I just did that. And we'll take these and drag them in. Sure enough. And I click the upload button right there. And I walk away. And... Uh, Later in the evening, I'll come back down. I'll see that they've all been uploaded. I'll then place the order. Uh, let's see what we got here. Order history. Yeah, that's actually not it. Image gallery. And uh, here's some proofs. 323. All the proofs are here. They're all uploaded in their... Uh, in their 4x6 aspect, I will click Add Logo, and I'll tell it where to put it. I want them on my proofs in the lower right. I will say, print me a 4x5 proof. Here's a 4x6 if you want the full frame. I don't because they won't fit in my folios. So 4x5 proof, I'll say I want one. And I click Add to Cart right here, which I'm not going to do because I don't want to order these. We've already had these proofs. And then I check out. I run through the shopping cart and place the order, and the proofs arrive a day or two later in UPS. And that is my current workflow. I hope that really helps. If you have any questions, do feel free to ask.